Five years ago, I was walking at the park with my 10-year-old daughter, Emilia. And just completely out of the blue, she asked me a question. Daddy, what it means to be happy? I was shocked and I was surprised, but at the same time I was worried because I knew that the thing that I was taking, the thing that I was speaking with her will have a huge impact on her life. So after taking a very deep breath, I said to her, Amor, in order to be happy, you need to be free. If you are free, you're gonna choose to study whatever you want. If you are free, you're gonna undertake the professional project that, you, that is correlated with your passions and with your convictions. If you are free, you're gonna marry the man that you really love. If you are free, you're gonna lead your life according to your own decisions. Become decisions, the important things behind personal decisions, is not about if they are right or wrong. It's about that is your decision. That's important. And Emilia immediately reacted and said, Daddy, if being happy means to be free, how to be free? And then my response was straightforward. In order to be free, you need to invest on your talents. A person who invests on her talents not only expands their knowledge, not only expands her capabilities, but also awareness, and also the possibility of adopting attitudes and behaviors that could become, for you, not only a better worker or a better professional, but most importantly, a better human being, a better mom, a better father, a better daughter, but a better citizen also. So that's why searching for happiness means liberating your mind. Countries are like people. Many countries in the world are not happy because they are not free. They have achieved political independence, but they are not economically independent. They have created this model of progress that is unsustainable and is out of control, the model of progress about exporting natural resources. It is unsustainable. Because developing countries, we cannot control the amount of non-renewable natural resources. But at the same time, we cannot control either the international prices. This lack of freedom, the lack of liberty of making our own decisions, is preventing us to follow our dreams and to create a nation with opportunities for all. Let's take an example. Peru, the country where I belong. Peru is an amazing, is an amazing country. But according to the World Bank data, 75%, 75% of total Peruvian exports are natural resources. And that fraction is exactly the same like 50 years ago. And Peru is the paradise of natural resources. We are one of the most important producers of minerals in the world. We are number one producer in fish flour in the world. We are one of the 10 top countries producers of food stuff, like avocado, asparagus, grapes, you name it. Peru ranks 16 all over the country in terms of access to fresh water. And not only that, 80%, 80% of all micro weathers in the world are in Peru. So that means that almost everything can grow there. And we, have, we can create the habitat of an enormous quantity of flora and fauna. But in spite of that, Peru has not been able to resolve the basic social problems. In Peru, 43% of all our children suffer from anemia. 43%. 14% of children in Peru are malnourished. 75% of all adults in Peru work in the informal sector and 21% of Peruvians live under the poverty line. So this is a paradox, right? What is not? And the reason is that evidence shows that the countries with more natural resources are exactly those countries that experience lower economic growth rates and lower gains in productivity. And the reason behind that is that natural resources is not the source of wealth and prosperity. Now, under the third and the fourth indu industrial revolution, is knowledge, which is the most important source of wealth. That's the reason. 
That's why Peru, historically, in 200 years, we have invested in mines. But now is the time for Peruvians to invest in mines. We have been able to extract riches from the soil. Now we need to extract riches from the talent of Peruvians. There are three policy actions that we can undertake to start helping revert in this situation. First, the traditional approach of building human capacity, capabilities based only in education policy should be changed. We need to replace it by a much more modern approach that takes into account a multidimensional, a more integrated, and a more articulated set of policies to build human capabilities. Starting for basic health policy, education policy, of course, but also the promotion of innovation, science, and technology, and the promotion of entrepreneurship and business development, all at the same time. Second, it's very important to understand that building human capa capabilities means that the reform starts in the mom's womb. Science is very clear on this. Human beings, we build our cognitive capacities at a very early ages, from zero to five years old. That's why successful nations take very good care of their babies, but providing three different kinds of public uh, services nutrition, health, and early stimulation. And finally, reform is not going to be possible without leadership. Many developing countries, for centuries and decades, education and capability building in humans has not been a priority. So leadership is required to organize winners, to compromise short-term losers, but most importantly, to inspire a whole nation. That the most important thing is the people, is the person. I love, I would like my daughter to be happy. I would like my four kids to be happy. I would like every single children in our world to be happy. But that is gonna be achievable only if we invest in their minds, in their talents. Thank you very much for listening.